Let's take a look at the waiver wire for fantasy basketball. We're heading into week 19 and we're listening to Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and thank you to the NRL for showing Americans the game of rugby league and how rife racism is. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at LockedOn. Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We're free and we're available on all platforms. Go double bang. What do you reckon? Uh, hit the thumb, hit the bell, hit the subscribe, leave your comments on YouTube, download the audio later on as well. Just checked in the amount of like listeners slash viewers this show has um, per week, like individual listeners, is crazy to me. Um, so everyone that does it, the amount is just insane. So I, I actually love those numbers. Um, and it just shows even like more downloads and more subscribers that are possible with the amount of people that watch. I, I love it. So thank you to everyone who has tuned in at any point during the season. And if you're still here, it means you must be getting close to the fantasy playoffs, which um, can start for some people this week. Just a quick note, Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl Leagues. The playoffs start this week. Top eight teams in each division get in. So after the game's finished today, I have to go through all 120 divisions and manually set the playoffs. So it's going to take me a little bit of time. So if you go into your league and go, hey, Josh, what's going on? I'm not in the playoffs. Yeah, just wait for me to fix it. And I will send emails out when it is all done. And if you're out of the playoffs, you're out. And then for the next two weeks, you can still make waiver moves if you are in the playoffs but just got to give me a bit of time to set the matchups. Just takes time to set them all manually. Cool? I think we're good. All right. Let's take a look at the waiver wire. How are we going to do this? Because it does get more tricky at this point of the year. So it is always worth remembering. If you are in the playoffs, again, Roto League's different. If your players haven't started, a bit different. Um, when I'm talking must roster, you've always got to balance schedule and matchup. I'm going to be throwing names at you where in this must roster segment where I just think they should be rostered regardless and they're sort of top 100-ish or top 100 players uh, over the short term, over the next 10 to 14 days that even if their schedule's not perfect, you still want them and start them anyway. So, it, it, but there's it it always a balancing act with all this stuff, yeah? And a lot of the time, if your team is good and you are in the playoffs, you might have a supercharged team where you've got all top 75 players. Maybe that's possible. So none of these guys are appealing to you. So I can't give you individual, specific, tailored advice for your specific team situation, format, all that stuff. Giving brief overviews is more just to spark ideas and conversations. We go, oh, oh, really? This guy? Okay. And then you work out whether that makes sense on your team, if it makes sense on your schedule. It can be tough. I know that. Okay. So let's take a look at some must roster category league players. Again, I think all these guys over the next two weeks on per game numbers are top 100 guys. You make, you work out whether it makes sense on your team or not. Kelly Linick, I don't know that he's going to start, and we'll find out today in place of Scotty Barnes. He started the second half last time out, but even if he doesn't, there should be more minutes there. It doesn't really matter, and we've seen that with many different players. It doesn't really matter how much, if he starts or not. They could start Dick. They could start Brown. E either of those guys, Brown, Dick, whichever one it's going to be. They could move in or could be a Linick. But they're all going to get more touches, more usage, more assist opportunities. So Kelly just needs to be rostered. Alex Caruso, must roster player. Trey Mann. I don't think Lamella Ball is coming back, but I don't know. But we just roll with Trey Mann. We roll with Ayo Desumu. We roll with Asar Thompson at the moment. Because finally, Monty's playing him more than anybody, basically. 35 minutes a night he's getting. Even with Stewart back. And we had some doubts. But it's happening. And Keontae George also. He's looking awesome. Now, Keontae George, it's one of those ones where we, we say this all the time. And I'm pretty sure if Scoot Henderson was healthy now, he'd be doing the same thing. Rookie guards suck. They're bad. 
And we say it all the time. By the time you hit February or March, these guys are going to be putting up good numbers. We talked about Keontae back like week two. I said, just watch this. If you want to get ahead of it, he's going to get the starting job. He got it. Started to look good, hurt his ankle, and then took two months to recover from that to get back into this position. But this is always the time. Shout out also to the rookie wall, which of course doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, they're your six guys there that if they're just available in a 12-team league, you've got to add them. Even 10-team league. Now, Keontae is a little bit different because in the weekly schedule show that I did yesterday, I talked about the Jazz being one of those teams that if you want to maximize games played, they're the only team of the three-game teams that plays two games between Monday and Wednesday, meaning you can do a plus two games advantage from Thursday through Sunday by dropping a Jazz guy. Keontae might have moved into that spot where he's too good to drop, unlike Clarkson, unlike... Collins, maybe, um, Hendricks, these sort of guys. But again, it's going to depend. If your team's going to win this week in playoffs, then you don't need to make those plus two ads. But you might have to. That just depends on your squad. For points leagues, it's a lot of the names are the same. I've got Kelly Linick on that list. I do have Sterling Henderson on that list, who's currently 49% rostered, old Scooter, and he's currently injured. I don't know when he's coming back, but it could be this week. And like Keontae George, when he comes back, it's going to probably take a week or so once he returns to get back to full minutes for Scoot. I think he's going to put up very comfortable top 100 category. Uh, sorry, points numbers. Categories, it's a little bit more iffy. But if you are in a more stable situation, if you're in a situation where it's not playoffs, or you can sit on a guy for a bit, your scoot's worth it. I've got Asar, Keontae, Trey Mann, all there as must roster points guys. And I've added Marvin Bagley to that list as well. Marvin Bagley is still a must roster guy in category leagues, but the priority for him is higher in points, much like Caruso and Desumu are higher in categories and lower in points. Um, that's a relatively common thing uh, to see those guys sit that way. But that's where we're at with the must roster guys across uh, points and category leagues. Let's look at droppable guys. Get that garbage out of here. I will try to, Jack. Let's take a look at category league droppable guys. Boyan Bogdanovich is at the top of this list. If Tom Thibodeau is not even playing him enough when OG and Randall and there's somebody else that's out that I can't think of, Mitchell Robinson is out, then it's just not going to be there long-term. So very, very comfortable to drop. Remember, these are not guys you have to drop. As if they're sitting on your roster, go, hmm, do I, how do I stream this week? How do I get extra games in? Well, Again, ignoring schedule, just as a general rule, they're sitting there where you can you can turf them. I think we have to be there with Boyan. Daniel Gafford, that uh, Mavericks game is currently going on at the moment. Just a quick check-in. Three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Gafford has played 13 minutes, has gone scoreless. Yeah, I'm going to double jack him, in fact. Get that garbage out of here! Which is very annoying, because the guy that I drafted in the majority of my leagues, I picked him at around pick 100. He returned top 40 value all season, and now he's done. He's nuked. He's finished. I still think those teams that I've got him on are going to be good enough to win, like industry pickup. But I don't know, man. It's really annoying. But he's gone. Kelton Johnson, 76% roster. Now, I say this. Now, today, Julian Champagne is out for the Spurs, so the horse probably goes and starts. Now, he still has a bad category game. That doesn't change. But it does give him a little bit more upside in terms of usage. So if you wanted to hold and see what happens with Champagne out today, I get it. But as a general rule, he's a bad category league player, and he's not a must roster guy. Jordan Clarkson, the man on the street. If you've got him, he is droppable, but... Maybe hold for the Monday-Wednesday game that they have. And then they have one game for the rest of the week. And then that's a clear drop after that. Malcolm Brogdon's on this list. Um, yeah, I just don't think he's going to come back and play. And then Josh Giddy there. Now, this also takes doesn't take into consideration, I haven't mentioned him, Scott Barnes. He's not coming back at any point in the next four weeks. This is not happening. And that's fantasy playoffs for a lot of you. And then I really doubt he's coming back to uh, eke out the last 10 days, 11 days of action. So I'm pretty sure Scott Barnes is a drop. Again, if you're comfortable, if you've got open IL slots, there's no need to drop him. But when push comes to shove, you go, hmm, I need to do something. I think that makes Barnsey in that spot a drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150. If your bet wins, you can bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams. Quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and of course, the futures market. We are, again, six weeks away from the end of the season, so things are coming into uh, focus for the awards. Defensive player of the year, most improved player. Feels like uh, Torres Maxey's got that one locked down, especially with Jalen Johnson shooting slumping at the moment and Scotty Barnes now being injured. Did Barnsley, well, Barnsley's not going to hit the 65, is he? So he's not going to win it. 
Wow. Okay. Interesting. Anyway, all of those uh, awards uh, available to bet on. NBA champions available as well. And check out all of the stuff they have over at Fangio. So go to Fangio.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Fangio, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, let's go back to some more droppable guys. Get that garbage out of here. Um, we'll look at it from a points perspective. A lot of the names are the same. Boyan, clear drop. Daniel Gafford, the easiest drop in the world in a points league. Uh, I've got Grayson Allen there again. That's just as a points league. He's been droppable for weeks and weeks and weeks. I might give it just a little bit to hold because I want to see what happens to Devin Booker. Now, the Suns play today. Booker's doubtful. There's no way he's playing, but how serious is this thing? But if we see, if Booker is out, which I expect, Allen go crazy today, you might hold him through that. But if Allen struggles and then Booker's back next game, well, there's no point in having him. Wendell Carter Jr., he's a category league drop as well, but I do have him there on the points league list. Um, Calden Johnson's a better points than category guy, but much again like Allen. Wait and see what happens with Champagne today, but he's on my cut list. He's definitely there. And then Yekka Okongwu as well. Even if Okongwu is back in a week or two, his points league value is not super, super awesome anyway. And now the Capella's there. It looks like it's back to the old minute split and Okongwu will be on the bench. So the upside's not even there anymore for him. So again, if you need to clear that space, someone like him sitting there is probably not going to be um, something that negatively impacts you if you move on, I would guess. Who's been added the most? Let's look at it over the last 48 hours. The number one most added player is the Baz Marty man himself, Royce O'Neill. He's up 49% on our advanced roster metric. A couple of reasons for that. The back-to-back over the weekend, and now Devin Booker goes down. If this team is healthy, O'Neill is not a 12-team league player. But they aren't. So yeah, go for it. The problem now is I think the Suns don't play again until Tuesday. I think there's a little bit of a game. It might even be Wednesday that their next game is. Let's go and have a look at that. But that means you've got to wait to get updates on Booker and you've got to hold on to a roster spot. No, they play Tuesday. My bad. They play Tuesday. So it's only the one day. Um, and then we'll find out. But interestingly, Bradley Beal is going to play on the back-to-back after he got ejected on Saturday. But Royce been at it. Uh, Kyle Lowry, up 24%. Started the last two games and he played big minutes. Again, 32 minutes he's at at the moment. Now he shot 11% um, with eight points, but... Those minutes are very interesting, getting minutes over old mate uh, Kelly Ubre, who only played 25 and Heald played only 28. After Buddy Heald's first couple of games after the deadline, man, what? He's just turned back into Buddy Heald, which, again, shouldn't surprise you. Lowry, yeah, I don't mind it as a stream guy, but definitely not a must. And then one of the next most added guys is Taylor Hendricks, who, if the Jazz didn't have that stinking schedule this week, I'd actually be all over it. You know that I've talked, I stashed Taylor Hendricks in Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl in November, I think it was mainly because we've got deeper benches and the team was off of John Collins. I went, okay, he's going to start at some point in February and I'm going to be really interested in it. And then I, had, I dropped, I idiot, like a month later, I dropped him. Okay, okay, maybe not. But here we are. We have right on schedule. Hendricks looks great. I think, I, I don't know what's going to happen next season, but my comp for Taylor Hendricks all the way through the draft process was Paul Millsap with a more reliable shot. Which if you remember Paul Millsap from a fantasy perspective, that man had a top 20 season. Now, I don't know if Hendricks ever gets there, but I had him number five or four overall on my overall draft board, Hendricks. I'm big into him, all right? And now it is happening. Moses Moody, one of the most added players. Wiggins is still out. Pajemski's out today. Moody was great last time out. That's a little bit desperation stuff. He hasn't shown that he's going to be a must roster guy every game, but honestly, with the way he's playing at the moment, no problem. Elf Stewart, up almost 5,000 ads. He's at 45% rostered now. They are not even giving him 28 minutes a night. They're going 34 a night, which is, again, crazy, but they are. 34 minutes a night of Stuart gives me hope is the wrong word, but it, it makes me feel more confident in using him and adding him. And then the last one is the big fella himself, grade A dick. He's up almost 3,000 ads. He will also benefit from Barnsley's injury. I maintain conviction that Dick is going to find himself in a larger role as the season rolls on. It's just about finding that right slot for Dick to get into. When do they open it up and allow him just to do his full like um, explosion of production? I, I don't know. It, it, I'm sure it'll come at some point, but we've been waiting for Dick to come for a, a while. I, I think we're there, and I don't mind the ad of Gray Day. I, rec- I reckon we're there. But again, there are other guys you can add who make more sense of Linux, but Dick is there. And I just want to see them fully, as Darvin Ham said, 
whip it out. Uh, so let's have a look at the um, who have been the most dropped players over the last 24 to 48 hours. Get that garbage out of here! Thanks, Jack. The most dropped player is Brandon Pajemski. He is down 35%. Cool. He's injured. The production's been down. Chris Paul is back. Even though Wiggins is out, absolutely no problems with Brandon Pajemski. Now, I people tweet at me and ask me questions all the time. And I, I do this. I, I talk about things often. And I think it's really important when you're asking questions uh, to anybody, whether it's me or somebody else, to, to provide information or, or to get an understanding of what common terms means. Well, someone tweeted at me today talking about, hey, I'm in a dynasty league. Uh, I'm in the playoffs. Do so I drop Pajemski? So, I, okay, the question's fine. But also, if you're in a situation where you're in a dynasty league and your decision is to drop Pajemski, you're not in a dynasty league. That's because my brain in dynasty leagues goes, you've got to have minimum 250 players rostered. It has to be. Probably 300, honestly. So if you're ever in a decision where oh, I'm going to drop Pajemski because there's going to be someone better on my waiver wire who helps me win now, then you are basically in a redraft league. You're in a redraft league that enables you to keep guys moving forward, which again is a really not great format because it leads to so much league imbalance. But just be really cautious with having, when you have asked those questions um, with those details, that sort of thing, if there's any discussion to drop a guy who's been like a top 150 player for the last two months, who is a rookie, like no, t- no league that's really like a, a dynasty league under the true sense of the word would ever have that as a consideration. So it's always worth couching that information. Hey, I'm in a dynasty league or a keep everyone league where our rosters expand to 100. We have 150 players rostered. So then we've got more of an idea of um, what it means. Just again, but I'll say it again. A dynasty league needs min- absolute minimum 250 players rostered probably 300 players rostered. Because if you're in a situation where it's 150 guys rostered and it's a dynasty keep everyone, you just treat it like a redraft league, basically, with some small tweaks, but it's basically a redraft league. And the ideas, when you, because then you'll hear content or you'll read dynasty content, you'll hear dynasty podcasts, you'll hear me mention things about dynasty, and you'll think, well, that applies to me. I'm in a dynasty league, but you're not really. It's, it's very different. And that's not to say that your league is bad or wrong. It's just that the differentiation between those terms can lead to a lot of confusion. So, And I am very confident that when I, when I say this, this applies to anyone else in the fantasy analyst sphere talking about Dynasty. When we are talking Dynasty, we are talking 300 players deep. We are not talking a situation where... Uh, uh, many people have said this to me even earlier. I sound, man, I sound like Trump. Uh, everyone says this to me. Uh, they said, sir, that... Early in the season, they're like, man, I don't know. I'm in a dynasty league. Should I add a Men Thompson? I go, what are you talking about? That is not a dynasty league. This is a top 25, maybe top 40 dynasty asset. Why that? Why is he sitting on the waiver wire? Like, so those differentiations are important as I rant on about nothing. And that does bring me to talk about prayer legend Amen Thompson, who is down 22%, rightfully so. Back to 20 minutes. Jollibee Jalen's playing 37 a night. We love what Amen does. Like, he brought the steals again last game. Awesome. But in 20 minutes a night, that's a steel specialist. That's Matisse Thibault with a little bit extra. His teammate, Tari, lost season, is out for the season. We said that this is looking out for the season about four weeks ago. I didn't know that there was a benign growth on his leg. That's not great. He's having surgery. We're talking four or five month recovery. He should be ready to go for the start of next season. But the way things stand with the Rockets, which we still don't know how it will look next year, he's still going to be behind Jabari Smith and probably Dylan Brooks and then Cam Whitmore. So there's no like, wow, he's definitely going to break out next season. He might, but it's not that clear. But he's a drop, obviously. Matisse Thibel, you streamed him in for defensive stats Friday, Friday, Saturday, back-to-back. Makes sense. They've got a pretty strong schedule, so if you want those numbers, he's there. Zaya Williams hurt his back yesterday. He's down 3,000. Look, that's a very clear drop. And Dwight Reith, everyone dropped him. I don't know if DeAndre Ayton's going to return, but I thought Reith was okay. I didn't think he was awesome, but I guess people streamed him just for the back-to-back. I, I do get the feeling that he will have some sustained 12-team run here. I just wish we had information about when uh, old mate DeAndre was going to be returning, if at all. The other thing is that they also lost Jeremy Grant in that last game, which means that the guy that was playing some backup center minutes, Jabari Walker, now has to play more at the four, which does then impact Reith. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS as well. 
It is just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. It is demon time on prize picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks and you can turn 10 bucks into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play out prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. Picks. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks, pick more, pick less. It is that easy. Okay, so we've looked at the most dropped, looked at the most added. It's time to have a squiz at the hot players. Happy birthday. So who's been a top 100 guy over the last week? Well, number one on that list is Dracaris Levert. He is up to um, 40, was it 43% rostered. He's currently got a questionable tag with a shoulder injury, but when someone's running hot like Levert, and he can do it, it's okay to use him. It's okay to add him. Understand that you can get really hurt with the percentages and then you can drop him later on, but it's probably worth having a crack at. Jaden McDaniel is also top 100. Now, he's a stranger to the top 100. His last couple of games, especially the last one, been awesome. I don't trust it for a single second. Stream guy only. Jabari Walker put up... like Earlier this season, he was getting starting chances and he was doing nothing. No defensive stats, bad efficiency, absolutely nothing. Last two games off the bench... Filling it up everywhere. And he was one of those guys again, like months ago. I said, I think he's going to have a big role end of season. I love that he's starting out. Let's grab it, see what happens. And then he was useless. And now the numbers are big. Ayton's in doubt. Jeremy Grant's in doubt. I think adding Walker makes quite a bit of sense. Caleb Martin's been top 100. I don't really trust that. He's very up and down and finding the right time to hit on him is difficult. Mo Wagner, that's also a tough one to figure out at times. Um, Wagner's a good points, rebounds, and field goal percentage player. I don't think I'd want to roster him as a must guy, but some interesting numbers. And the last one is Ashton Hagens, who the Blazers had as a 10-day contract guy. They've converted him now to a two-way. So we've got to do the whole two-way dance now where he can't play every game. He plays half the games. Um, but he had a good game last time out. The thing is that the, the game before, he did nothing, and it was Delano Banton who had big minutes. So I fear that a lot of this stuff for Portland is going to turn into Grizzlies. Now, it won't for guys like Walker or Reith or Murray and Scoot when he returns, but the Bantons and Haganses and probably Chris Murray maybe, those sort of players, uh, maybe even Tamani Kamara, whose role, actually his role is pretty secure. But Hagens was great, top 100 numbers. But remember, on a two-way, he can only play every second game now. So yeah, that value is not quite there, is it? No, it's not. Good answer, Josh. Injury replacement players. A lot of those guys we've already mentioned are injury replacements, but I've got a couple of others I just want to chuck in here. Bruce Brown, I've mentioned already. Brownie could get a start with a Linux out and not with a Linux out with Barnsley out. I'm just going to check whether there's any information on those lineups yet. Nope, not yet. Um, so Brown has that appeal. Um, the big stiffy himself, the five minute man, Bones Highland. I mentioned him because people have mentioned him to me. He is 2% rostered. He is absolutely not a 10 team league player or a 12-team league player, or a 14-team league player. At best, you could squint and go 16 teams. Russell Westbrook is out four weeks. Bones Highland will replace Russell Westbrook. He will play 16 minutes a night, and that is nowhere near standard league value. But we've got to, we cater to all leagues here. You're in a 30-teamer, yeah, you add the big stiffy. You're in a 20, you add him. In an 18, you get close to adding. 16, yeah, maybe. But Bones needs quite a bit of time, quite a few touches, to overcome the bad field goals and put up enough but enough value. But I wanted to mention him. Jordan Goodwin. He's sort of injury replacing Smart, Bain, Morant, Kennard, Conchar, Rose, whoever. And much like Ashton Hagens, he's on the two-way diet. What we know, though, is that when Goodwin plays, he starts, he plays close to 30 minutes, and he puts up 12-10 value. The problem there is that you might get two games a week out of him, and that's not enough to just park him on your roster. Good stream guy, but... It's really frustrating. Eric Gordon, if Booker is out, Gordon is the guy that we take a look at to grab outside of Royce O'Neill, who we've already mentioned. We've got Chris Murray there with the Brogdon injuries, with a Grant injury now. Uh, Murray's been starting. He's been getting good minutes. He's been doing very little in them, but I think there will be a time that 
when some other guys sit out, maybe it is just Grant sitting out now, that Murray becomes more interesting. And the last one on this list is Vasily Mishich with Steph, Steph, not Steph, with Seth Curry out, with Lamelo Ball still out. Um, Misic is going to have a bigger opportunity. He's going to have an opportunity to get some assists and be valuable there. Um, at least while oh, Cody Martin's the other one. Cody Martin and Seth Curry, while those guys are out, as well as Lamelo Ball, there's a big opportunity for him uh, to step up and provide some value for you. Lastly, let's look at some other names that are worth us discuss- discussing. We're about to start week 19, and you, you know what that means. That is five-game week for the Nets. Dayron Sharp might only play 16 minutes a night. That only might be 80 minutes for the week. But Sharp is such a good permanent player that there is value in using him for this week. It's risky using a 16-minute backup and going, well, I'm just going to use him all week. But that one move, that one roster spot delivering five games of value is probably top 100 for him. And that's enough, I think. I've got Paul Reed on this list because, again, everyone was very quick to drop after he went scoreless in 13 minutes two games ago. And then he went to the bench. And then today... He's had 28 minutes off the bench, 13, 7, and 3, steal, and a block with a 3. Huh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You got to roster him, yeah? Yeah. Shout out to the Yahoo chat, who I'm sure are slandering me every single moment that Paul Reed gets mentioned or Paul Reed has a bad game. Shout out to those guys. And I'm sure the apologies uh, after today's performance will be flowing in thick and fast. I'm sure they'll just be all over the place. I can't actually read the Yahoo player chats anymore. They're banned in Australia unless I go in and make all these changes to my um, phone settings. And you know what? That's the most toxic place in the world. So I'm not going to make settings to go and uh, change my settings to go and look at it. Anyway, irrespective of that, yeah, Paul Reed should be rostered. Dorian Finney-Smith and Cam Johnson both fall into the five-game thing. Now, I just mentioned Cam Johnson here because he just he should be rostered, right? I don't know that he plays all five games, but he needs to be rostered while Cam Thomas is out. Finney-Smith's 11% rostered, meaning he's available in a lot of different spots. Is he awesome? <laughs> no, he's terrible. But five games, starter. Imagine you get 30 minutes a night. You probably don't, but you could. It's 150 minutes out of a roster spot. You don't get that. It's valuable. Um, Kobe Bufkin, just a name again I wanted to mention. Playing well, not into 12 team. Like In terms of these rookies who are stepping into larger roles, I would much rather have Dick. I would much rather have Hendricks. I would much rather have George. I would much, much rather have Scoot. Bufkin's not at 12 level yet. I think he will get there. Not yet, though. I've got TJ McConnell on this list as well. He's not going to get big minutes. But you get 10 and 6 out of him so regularly with high field goal percentage that there's an, I've got him in a 14 team league. I think that's the perfect spot. But I don't mind him even being rostered or considered to be rostered in a 12 team league as a stream option at times. And that is the Waiver Wire show for today. I'm going to be doing the specific Waiver Wire Daily Lookhead Monday streaming show coming up later as well. So make sure you're around and staying tuned for that. So I know that all the double bangers will be. Go and hit the thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe, leave your comments down below. Quick last shout out to the Yahoo chat. (laughs) I don't know why I'm talking about Yahoo chat so much. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.